Hello everyone, I hope your day is going well. What we have for you is the Ronin 1911 in 45 ACP. This is the full size five inch model. It has a five inch stainless steel barrel with a one in 16 twist rate. It has a carbon steel slide that is blued and the frame is stainless steel. They are both forged. It has the GI recoil system. It has laminate wood grips. It weighs 40 ounces. It's 8.6 inches in total length and it's 5.5 .5 inches tall. This is a 1911 that's under a thousand dollars that has a lot of great features. Now let's go over them. So you see here on the pistol that it has the two-tone carbon steel that's blued, what they call the hot salt bluing. You can see how nice it is. You can see the stainless steel uh, frame here. I always want to call it a lower. The stainless steel frame. You see the controls are stainless steel. That'd be kind of cool if some of them were blued, but I do like the look of the stainless and the blued. You can buy parts from Wilson Combat that will work for these, no problem. So if you wanted to add some blued parts to give it even more contrast, you could. But if I would change anything, it would change out the plastic trigger, but we'll get to that. That's not mentioned on the website when they go over the specs for this, is that the trigger is actually plastic. So this is a 1911 that is under $1,000, but it's like in the 800 range and it has a plastic trigger. But everything else is really nice, so it's kind of weird that they did that. So let's start with the fiber optic front sight here. You can see pretty nice two white dots in the rear it works not my favorite but it works you see the slide serrations front and real rear and how deep they are how much space there is between each other and then they're cut pretty deep so it's easy to rack the slide front or rear no problem it has the uh, little bird's eye thing here so that you can see if there's a piece of brass in there. It says SA45 Auto on the barrel. I don't have any other 1911s. Well, I do. I lied. I, I just lied. I have the EMP in 9mm. But I don't have... This comes in 10mm or 9mm too. So you can get this in 10mm and 9mm or in a smaller size. This is the full size 5 inch. It has the enhanced safety right here. Instead of the little nubby one that comes like on the GI one. The factory mil spec one. Has the enhanced hammer, has a more protruded beaver tail, no slide or no hammer bite at all. Almost said slide bite, no hammer bite. The grip here has some texturing, but it's not very aggressive to be honest. It's checkered, but it's, there's some that is way more aggressive and then smooth here. The magazine release button, a lot of texture on it, it's cut pretty deep, works great. And what I like about these grips, the laminate wood grips that it comes with, is the checkering and then the smooth on both sides. It's like that. No safety on this side, thankfully. I'm not a big fan of the ambi safety because there's only one slide lever release, so it's not really ever fully ambi, but whatever. Um, because it's a thin grip, I'm allowed to get, I'm able to get my thumb to the magazine release, no problem, and to the slide release, and to the safety. So, just using my right hand, I can operate all the controls. Some of the other 1911s, the grip is thicker, so it's harder for me to get to the controls, and I end up having to use my left hand for the slide release when I load a new magazine at the range. So, the downside, I think, is this plastic trigger. Like, it moves around. I don't really like that. The metal one I'd, I'd much rather have um, just from a comfort standpoint, but it still works just fine. You don't notice it when you're using it and you kind of don't notice it until you start to put your hands on it. But let's go over the uh, trigger pull and the reset. On the 1911, they're all nice, but I would prefer it if the trigger was metal, to be honest. Doesn't take a whole lot. See the reset. Boom. 
So it's like this even on the mil spec. So you can't go wrong with the 1911 trigger. I have some that are more expensive than this and some that are more or cheaper than this. And the trigger is nice on all of them. They're all really accurate too. They're all about the same weight, give or take. If it has the full length guide rod, it'll usually be heavier. Or if it has the bull barrel, this has just the regular barrel. So the emissary model has the bull barrel. This one just has a regular barrel. But if you're looking for a 1911 that won't break the bank, that has a good amount of features, I would check out this one, the Ronin, because it comes in different sizes and different calibers. So you can get it in 45, 10 mil, or 9 mil. You can also get it in a four and a quarter inch version of those calibers, this same model. Then there's the EMP Ronin, which is the concealed carry little brother that's a 1911, but it only comes in either a three inch barrel or four inch barrel model, and they're only a nine millimeter. And those are about the same cost as one of the full size ones, to be honest, because I do have the EMP nine millimeter, the three inch model, which is a very nice piece, to be honest, and uh, it's a tack driver. Same with this. I can be extremely accurate with these 1911s, and I prefer the 1911s that don't have the accessory rail. Usually on the higher end 1911s, that's one of the features that they'll have is an accessory rail for a light. This one obviously doesn't have it, but that accessory rail changes the grip a little bit because there's more material needed here, and then they, you know, it's not rounded like it is here, so it changes my grip a little bit. So I like these 1911s like this and i only have springfield armory 1911s currently uh, i stay away from the kimbers because of quality control issues that i've seen other people have doesn't mean that they're not a you know reliable 1911 that's just from what i saw and springfield's been making these for a really really long time so i trust their manufacturing also the colt ones um, can be in the same price range um, the mil spec is a little bit more than, say, the Springfield Armory mil spec, but they do have 1911s that are under $1,000 that have a good amount of features, like this one here, the Ronin 1911. I have a target that I went uh, and I did some target shooting with this. I've went to the range a few times with this now, probably five or six times. So I've got it broken in somewhat. I mean, a 1911 doesn't take much breaking in. Uh, that's what's great about it too, is it's ready to go right out of the box and doesn't have like the double recoil metal spring that some of the new the polymer striker filed pistols will have, like my Gen 4 Glock. Um, the, that metal recoil spring takes forever to break in. This is great right out of the box. So I shot the target at like 30 feet and you can see that I was able to stack the rounds on top of each other. So I'm going to grab the target and go over some more of uh, the accuracy that you can get out of uh, 1911, uh, especially the Ronin 1911 that I used here. But it's not atypical. I would say that this is typical accuracy that you can get from a 1911 at 30 feet with 230 grain factory ball ammo. All right, so here's the target. I was shooting at about 30 feet. I use 230 grain factory ball ammo, brass cased, nothing special. And you can see that I'm able to stack the rounds on top of each other, even in the small diamonds. So here, I couldn't even count how many there is there. It's probably six. Here, there's eight or nine, maybe even 10. Who knows how many that are stacked in here. Um, I actually try to do like the challenge like they have at the fair where you got to get all the diamonds gone and then you win the big bear or whatever it is, the huge stuffed animal. So that's essentially what I'm trying to do each time with the little diamonds is get the whole diamond to be disappeared. Um, but, you know, as you can see, it's a work in progress, but not bad. So I've used this, I'd say like five times at the range now. And right out of the box, you can do this, no problem. So if you're a person that has only used, say, those polymer pistols that are lighter weight and then like 9 millimeter, you may want to try out a 1911 in 45. A bigger, heavier gun and a bigger, heavier caliber, you may actually like it more. I did. I started off with the Glock 17s and the Glock 19s, 
and you know I only had the nine millimeter pistols and then I stepped it up to the 1911 45 and I haven't looked back since I've tried out 10 mil and I'm still not as impressed as I am with the 45 the holes that it puts in the paper pretty big also when you get like the jacketed hollow points it can even rip the paper too sometimes you'll get these big rips in the paper so it's big and it's heavy but at the same time the accuracy is undeniable i'm decent with the polymer pistols but i'm more accurate with the bigger heavier 1911 i can't do this with the glock pistols i can't do this with the sig pistols i can't do this with the springfield armory hellcat I can do pretty well with the other ones, but I can't do this well. So when you're able to stack them repeatedly on top of each other, that's really good. So you only need to make slight adjustments. So you see here, I only need to make a slight adjustment. You know, we're talking like a half an inch higher. I would prefer, right? Because here's the exact center of the target. But I'm touching it almost, right? It's like the littlest amount. So I still want to do better with it, but you can see that it doesn't need much breaking in and even a hobby shooter like me that has no formal training that previously used only Glock 9mm, SIG 9mm, striker fired pistols and now I prefer the bigger heavier hammer fired 1911. Even the mil spec. You don't need to get an expensive 1911 to enjoy its accuracy and design. Even some of those uh, Turkish ones may not even be that bad, to be honest. The um, Turkish guns are pretty nice. I'm pretty impressed by the features that you get for the price that they cost. So if you're looking for a 1911 that won't break the bank, but isn't the basic mil spec that has some of the features that you'd be looking for, like the enhanced safety, the enhanced hammer, the nice laminate wood grips, the two-tone finish, the fiber optic front sight. You should check out the Ronin from Springfield Armory. You can get it in different calibers or different sizes. Check out their website for more details. Stay tuned for more reviews. There may be a new 1911 review coming soon. We'll see. Subscri subscribe, like, comment. We'll see you on the next one.